Howdy folks, Todd here with Great Escape Farms. This is a trench here that collects water coming down off this hill here so it doesn't go into the property next door. And we just put in pipes underneath so that we could actually have a pathway that goes over top. And we came down and we are collecting all that with a swale, basically a ditch on contour. And we have planted into that. And this video is about how to put this together. And make sure you stick around to the end because we're actually gonna show this swale in use with about an inch and a half of rain coming down and going into it and you'll see how it stops water and allows it to infiltrate into the soil here and waters the plants and helps hydrate the whole landscape here. So what we're going to do is extend this trench or make it a little bit deeper coming down and we are on a bit of a slope so we don't want to increase the slope to make a big issue with the ground getting washed away on us so what we're going to do is come down into this general area right here and then we're going to install a swale here to basically let the water slowly seep into the ground and we'll plant in that swale okay so there is our trench gonna come right down here i need to dig out a little bit right there i use the laser level which is right here to run a flag and figure out the contour line so i am running right from that flag over there along here and you can see where it goes i was up this way a little bit further but the issue is i ran into this tree here so i had to come down about six foot or so which kind of changed everything but it actually did okay because it uh, is going to allow me to come all the way down here so I need to bring the tractor along and move out some of this brush and dig a couple stumps up but it's actually going to give me a longer swale than what I originally planned on putting in. So this is what a two bottom plow looks like. Basically cuts in and each one of the plows throws it over. In this case as I'm looking like at this it throws it over to the right and this is, I started, the trench was already here, so I just laid it down in here and it made a line right there. I will check and make sure that we are going downhill because there's a couple areas there where it looks like it might come up a little. The issue is, is this is on the tractor. So if the tractor, if the ground itself is not level, the tractor is not going to make it level. The tractor is going to ride on the ground that you're on and it will lift and lower the plow based on the tractor level itself. So I am going to do two passes on the flags here. Okay, let's go ahead and walk this swale here. What I did first time is I put my right front tractor tri tire on the flags. So I knew I, that meant I was uphill a little bit further and that threw it over from the center. And then when I went back on the second pass, I had my tractor tire, my right front tractor tire just over the hill here where I was and you can see it's almost right on where the flags are so it is pretty good what I will do is come back with a shovel and a couple other tools I have and hand groom this out I will dig the roots out and I have a couple areas like this one right here that I'm gonna need to dig down a little bit there were too many roots and too many things that I was hitting here so I had to lift up a little bit on the plow and I will also come back through with the laser level and make sure that everything, once I get all the, the ditch out here, I will make sure that it is perfectly level and I will dig down further and add in soil where need be. Boy, this is actually some decent looking soil here for West Virginia. Usually I have orange clay. So it's been a few days. The day that I dug this, I actually went through and I completed digging all the dirt up and throwing it on the downhill side 
and so the ditch itself is complete and I went through with the laser level and I checked and I made sure that I didn't have any significant high spots I don't care about an inch or two but I just made sure I didn't have anything that was a foot or so higher actually you'll notice there's a flag there and another one right here I did have a high spot right here it was about six to eight inches high because the plow just didn't go in deep enough so I ended up digging this out with a shovel to get it correct and another thing I, I forgot about I still have to do is I still have to go along where the flags are right here and hand dig that out because I couldn't get the tractor in there because of the tree great big tree root and stuff like that but what I'm working on right now is I need to groom the mounds of dirt right here I don't know if it shows up here but it's basically big chunks and it's real rough and there's grass and stuff like that so what I'm going to use is this tool right here it's actually a firefighter tool got it online I don't think I got it from Amazon I think I got it from uh might have been rogue.com I'm not sure but we called it the rogue tool and we use this for just breaking everything up uh we hit it like this and we break the larger chunks into smaller chunks and basically groom this mound right here all the way along so I'm about half done you can see it's groomed up to here and then you can almost see right there there's a mound and it just it looks different there's a lot more rock in it as i'm going along i am pulling any leftover roots out and just making it look better so i got it all the way up to the property line here it's all level in here it was at kind of an angle going down so i'm kind of boxing it off in here so that it will hold more water and you can see what i mean down here level this way but once we get up here, it kind of cuts up at an angle. So by having it level, the bottom level, I'll be able to hold more water. So here's the hill coming down. I put in two tubes here, which I've had around for a while, and covered it up with some of the excess dirt here and just put some rocks around. Still need, need to do some grooming here, but I'm gonna do that later. Here's the egress and cleaned up the mound here. At this end, I capped off the end there and dug out to the fence and we are groomed all the way across to have some big roots in here and I just worked around those and the water will find its way around that point. So what I have right now is a ditch on contour with a level area in between which will hold a lot of water. The problem is if this thing fills up in a big rainstorm, then it's gonna find a low spot somewhere and there will be some one somewhere and it will wash away. So what I need to do is build a planned escape route for the water and that is called a spillway and the bottom, the downhill side hill here, the mound that we put in is all very loose. I groomed it but we just threw the dirt over and it's just setting there. It's groomed. We're going to plant into that. We are not going to pack it down with the exception of a spillway. So somewhere in here, I'm going to get a spillway, probably about eight foot wide, somewhere between six and eight foot wide. I'm going to have to do some calculations and figure out how much uh, spill over I need. And what I'm going to do is I'm getting ready this weekend to put in another swale from way back on the other side of the house there, back behind the garage and over here. And I'm not sure where it's going to end. So I need to map that out, figure out exactly where that's going to end uh, because I want the spillway here to dump the water so it goes into the swale back down there and actually will take it back over into the land over there if there is space available there. If not, there will be several spillways in the other one down there. So. Just getting ready to wrap up the end of another day here. So I planted trees and bushes in here. Uh, let's see, I have American persimmon down there. I have European walnut right there. And I have Chinese chestnut right there. And then I have elderberries in between and I kind of repeat the trees. So the trees have at least 18 feet in between and the ones that will get the largest will be the walnuts. And then 
the American persimmons can get very big, but if I keep them trimmed back, they'll stay small and kind of be an understory, and the elderberry will definitely be an understory. The chestnuts will start out small, but they'll get a little bit bigger. I can have them somewhat close together, so I'm going to use the Chinese chestnut as an understory the walnut as a uh, main canopy tree and then the persimmon and the elderberry as kind of shrubs so i can trim the persimmon to do that for me and that way i have a good food row here so i put some mulch down if you notice there is an area here that i don't have mulch down and that is where the spillway will be so i figured out where the swale will be in the back and how i'm going to interconnect everything together and this is the proper spot here i had mentioned earlier i was going to look up how much water flow i needed and how wide i needed to make it and i didn't get around to that so i just went with the larger and i have a 16 foot spillway here which should be more than enough for a 130 foot swale so this is the final dry shot of this video. So I put in the mulch along the path here. You can see the drainage ditch coming along here. So we just, before we actually had to walk through the drainage ditch, now even in the rain, we can walk over it. And let's out here, comes along and dumps off into the swale. This, again, the swale is level it is a ditch on a level contour so we start over here and we go along and every so many feet we have trees or shrubs so this one right here is an elderberry i put fencing around it this is what they call two by four fence so it's two wide and four high and it is four foot tall then i put t post in to hold it and I just have one little piece of high tensile electric wire. And it allows me to take this off. I only have one piece on, so that way I can take this off for maintenance so I can weed around, uh, add more mulch if, if need be, and do anything around the plant there. So the bushes have four foot tall and the trees have six foot tall here. And since the last video shot, I added two trees and they're, uh, they're down at the other end. I added a spice bush, which is a bush, and I added a mulberry tree. Both of them, uh, red mulberry, both of them are native to the eastern United States here. And I went ahead and tamped down, or tapped down, the spillway here. So this is where when we overflow, see if I can get down low here. I don't know if you can see that, but it will overflow here. It is packed down tight, so I shouldn't have wash away. The way that I tamp this down is, well, I walked on it a good bit. By, by the way, there, I don't know if I mentioned that in this video, but the rest of the hill here, don't walk on. You want it loose, so you don't want it packed down. So that will let the water seep in. This is the only spot that gets packed packed down the spillway here and what I had was a 10 by 10 yeah I don't know what you call it I, I just called a stamper here and I went up high and knocked it down to or I pressed it down to compress it here so it is in nice and tight so I stamped it down then I walked on it and then I stamped it down then walked on it again I did multiple iterations of that so it is packed down pretty tight so let me know what you think. If you have any questions about swales or spillways or the contour line or any of the other processes that I did here, go ahead and send them my way. I learn an awful lot by your questions and I do appreciate it. Well, we're getting our rainstorm, just not as much as what I had expected. We were supposed to get one to two inches and I don't think we've had but three quarters of an inch overnight. And uh, We just had a downpour, but I think that's about it. The storm is finishing up. so. I do have a little bit of rain coming down here from the last downpour. It is going under the path here. I do have a little bit of water coming down the hill here, which is adding to our culvert here. And we have water coming in. Hopefully you can actually see it running down there. And it is hitting our swale here. And we have water all the way up to the back fence there and coming across here and it 
is not too much over where the spillway is there. We have just a little bit there. And I dug it a little bit deeper here, and it, it looks deeper, and that's because it is, because I expect a little bit of runoff, uh, dirt runoff, coming in and filling that in a little bit. So that'll work itself out over the next couple of big rains that we get. But you can see we don't have any rain really running past here. I do have one puddle over here, but it's not streaming. That's just from the downpour that we just got. So it is holding the water here, letting it sink into the landscape, which is gonna help the trees and the shrubs here. And that is the whole purpose, is to slow the rain down, let it sink into the landscape. If we get excessive, it will overfill in the spillway, and I will have another set of swales down below, which will tie into the swales, which will connect next door. And I will have videos on all that in coming up. So if you subscribe, you'll see those where we actually have a work project planned for later this week to start that big long project there should be somewhere between 800 and a thousand foot of swale going in there. So that is it for this video. Thank you very much for staying with us this long. If you have any questions or comments, please include them in the comment section down below. Thank you very much and have a great day.